Uh, you're on a roll call, Melody Patton. All right, Ms. Patton, I need you to raise your right hand. You, uh, I need you off mute. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay. And so uh, I, this is the point where I know you're, uh, there's been some help with technical difficulties and, and questions and all that stuff, and that's fine. But what nobody can do is instruct you how to answer questions as a witness. So I'm going to instruct you while you are under examination um, as a witness that you not place yourself on mute and that you uh, ask anyone who's in the room with you to leave so that you are not receiving any coaching from the sidelines as to how to answer questions. Yes, Your Honor. I'm alone. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Bryant. Uh, Ms. Patton, where do you live currently? 28411 Dobbin Huffsmith Road, Magnolia, Texas, 77354. And uh, who do you understand owns that property? Betty Patton. Do you pay rent to the estate to live there? Yes. Where do you deposit that rent? I pay it directly to the mortgage company. Have you ever opened an estate account for the estate? Yes. Where is it? At Chase Bank. Okay, when did you open it? I have to look at my records. It was uh, a couple months ago. Approximately how much money is in that account? Zero dollars. As I've said, there's no estate funding right now because I can't get the house sold and the beneficiaries have the only other estate funds. When you say estate funds, what are you referring to? I'm referring to any money that the estate has, which would be house, pro house sale proceeds or assets. And all the assets are divided among beneficiaries and so that means that without a house sale, the only estate funding available is beneficiary money. Are you operating a business out of the Dobbin Hussmith uh, property? Yes. What's that business? It is a dog breeding business and uh, yeah, dog breeding business. Who are the owners of the dog breeding business? Um, Linda Codis. Are you an owner in that business? Does the business have a lease with the estate to operate a business on that property? Yes. How much rent does the business pay to operate on that pro to, to have a lease on that property to operate? The business was, uh, we settled with Betty that the business would pay 50% of the mortgage note every month, but that the payments would not start until after a year of tenancy. But just despite that, we the business has been paying since, um, since October or, or November, we, we've been paying the whole time and the full amount, not 50%. So we've actually paid way more than what we were required to. Okay, so is it your testimony that the business has a lease with the estate? The, the business has a lease with Betty Patton at this property. And that was entered into before she died? Correct. As of October. Have you ever provided a copy of that lease to any of the beneficiaries under the will? No, but I can. Have you ever prepared an inventory of Betty's estate? No. Have you provided any type of notice to the beneficiaries that in your capacity as the independent executor? Notice of what? Any notice whatsoever. A, a notice yes. notifying them that Betty had died. Yes. What date did you provide that notice? Um, March. Um, 13th, about the day she died, March 13th, 2023. Okay. When were you appointed as the executor of the estate? Appointed on uh, July 15th, I think. I'd have to look at my record. Do you need me to look that up? If I represented to you that you were appointed on June 15th, would that sound correct to you? Would you agree with that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Actually, that, yes, it was her birthday. Okay, so since the time that you were appointed on June 15th, what actions have you taken to administer this estate? I have, um, I have communicated with Fidelity regarding the beneficiary distributions. I've communicated with the with um, all of the beneficiaries, and I have sent them all forms, uh, with the exception of David, because of this situation here. Um, they have all gotten their account set up to my knowledge um but i don't know that for sure 
uh, so I shouldn't have said that. Um, but I have also um, made sure that there is um, an appraiser that can come to the house to brace Heather specifically. Um, they just need some more information from me. And that's why I needed to get David moving along. Um, I have also um, kept up all of the payments and utilities for the Dobbin property uh, that we've discussed. Um, I have um, supported David and Tim as well, uh, which is not specifically in the will, but they had no jobs or money of their own. So that was kind of a responsibility I had to undertake. So I've made sure they didn't end up under a bridge. Um, I have de delegated uh, Tim to clean up the Brace Heather house to get it ready for um, selling. Um, that is the reason why he is there now it is not to live there. And I am giving him a very strict and close deadline to finish these things. Uh, I've also gone over there myself and have helped out. Um, I have been in contact with um, the local law enforcement and neighbors to make sure that the house is kept safe and secure. Um, I have um, I think that's it because the will was pretty um, vague. There wasn't much in there. Okay, I'm going to object to the non-responsive portions of that answer. Um, uh, Ms. Patton, have you published a notice to creditors? No. What is? What do you mean by notice? I guess, what do you mean by notice? Have you provided a written notice or published a notice as required under the Texas State Code to creditors of any state? No, but I've talked with them over the phone. Have you provided notice per the Texas Estates Code to each beneficiary of the probate of Betty's will? Other than text message? Any notice? Then, you, then yes, they received notice via text message. Have you filed anything in the probate court notifying the probate court or the beneficiaries or certifying that you have, that you have provided that notice? What is the question? <clears throat> how how have you I told the probate court that you have provided that notice to the beneficiary? I have not told the probate court that I provided that notice. Okay. But it's I'm, your contention that you have provided that notice and you did it via text message. Yes, and in David's case, it was verbal, multiple times verbally. Uh, and uh, yes, is the answer. Have you notified the secured creditors of Betty's estate? Um, I've notified some. I've, do you want me to list who I've notified? Sure. I've list. I've notified um, um, all of the things regarding her pension or medical or um, um, I forgot what it's called. Obviously, Fidelity and her bank. Bank of America, um, American Express. Uh, I think I've missed a couple. I know I've missed a couple, but I've notified many of them. Social Security. Uh, yeah, I. was there another question? No. Have you prepared an inventory of the estate? No. Why but, not? Uh, because I could not get into the house to operate with it and do that properly because of David and the living condition there. They are hoarders, not just of stuff, but of filth. And I could not move around the house. And that's what I want to submit evidence of. I could not actually take inventory properly because of all of the stuff and the filth that was there. I'm going to object to the non-responsive part of that of her answer. Overruled. Did the estate ever pay for the utilities at the Brace Other House? Post death? That would be the estate, yes. No. There was Why no not? money. 
there was no money to do so. It was all locked up in fidelity uh, under the beneficiary specifically. The only money that the estate had at the time of her death was beneficiary money and unsold property. Which includes the Dobbin Huffman property, correct? That's correct. How much is that property worth? At this time, it's worth $2 million, but it will be worth more. And I have more information on that if you want me to share. Um, how much is the Brace Heather property worth? Four hundred or well, three hundred thousand if I can't get it repaired properly. Are there any um, efforts to sell the Husband property? Yes, but not soon um, because uh, if you'd like more information, um, we're in a commercially co commercial developing area where everything around us is diver is developing commercially. Meaning, the longer that we wait to sell the more the m more we will get for it and so we have been talking we, we we've been discussing selling it but i don't have a, a date I, I don't have something soon like i do with brace heather and so why would you choose to sell the brace uh, ask me strike that as the executor of the estate why would you sell the brace heather property and not sell the husband's property well brace heather was specifically told in the will it states the will does not specify the Dobbin property for one thing. The will states the Brace Heather property and it states very specifically that it be sold upon death. And she made it very clear to me while she was living here in her last months of life that she wanted it sold immediately and for the for David and Tim not to stay there. So that has been my first priority and been one of the hardest ones. And also we don't we can't sell the Dobbin property um, under the lease agreement. Um, the way it's written. And so the business would have to, I, I guess it would have to make an exception to the contract. I'm not sure, but because that's not my area. So I don't want to speak out of turn, um, but I'm answering your question. Is that Brace Heather is the easiest thing to sell first? And that would release funds to David and Tim, which would make them able to live somewhere and not be in the situation that they're in now. And also it would pay off the debts as necessary. Okay. Who are the beneficiaries of the will, as you understand it, as the executor? Paul, uh, David and Tim are beneficiaries of the house uh, at Brace Heather, which is the only asset listed in the will. Okay. Your Honor, can I share my screen? I'd like to show her a copy of the will to, to kind of go through some of uh, what she's testifying to. Yes, ma'am. Here, hopefully I can do this correctly. Okay, can you guys, can you see that? Yes, I can. All right. Okay, so do you understand this? Do you recognize this document? Yes. And what is it? It's the will of Betty Patton. Okay, and this is this is the will that you contend is her latest will, the one that has been admitted to probate. Is that right? Yes, and I did forget to list Melanie's. When you just asked me who was in the will, I forgot to mention her. Okay, okay. So, um, but as I've said, there is no open account with First Street Financial, so I can't give her that. However, I was planning on giving her any house proceeds that I could, or, you know, I, I was planning on giving her whatever I could anyway, because. I love her. Okay, can you show me in this will where the, the Braze Heather property is specifically identified? And I'm, I can go page by page yes. here. I'm not quite sure. Well, I think I would have you looking with you. Uh, definitely page two or three. Okay, here's page two. Keep going. Okay, I'm, I'm wrong. Keep going. Keep going. That's the end? That's the end. Well, then we missed it. Okay. Let me go back. This is page three. Do you see it on page three? No. Okay. Page two. Do you see it on page two?
I see that it says my estate. Um, okay, go back up, uh, go to page one then. Okay, so it's just, um, so, I mean, it's number second then right there where it says, it doesn't mention Brace Heather by name, but it's talking about the real property uh, that she has possession of at that time, which at that time was only Brace Heather. Uh, you would agree that that is, and you agreed with me earlier, right? That the Dobbin Hubbard property that you live in today is owned by Betty Pat. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So at the date the Betty on the date Betty died, she owned both the Brace Heather property and the Dobbin Hubbard property. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, I want you to look right here for me in this first uh, sentence. Um, if you can, can you see that what I have highlighted on my screen? Yes. Okay, can you can you read to me right here um, who who Betty is identifying as her children? My children shall refer to David Boyd Patton and Paul Timothy Patton. Any reference here in my child or something here, like that's that? That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, here on we're going to go to paragraph four, uh, subparagraph B. Um, can you please read to me that highlighted sentence that I have there? It is my will and desire that all of the rest and residue of my estate of every description, real, personal, or mixed, which I may own or in which I may have an interest at the time of my death shall pass and vest absolutely and in fee simple in my children equally. Okay. And, and what do you understand that sentence to mean? Uh, well, it means that at the time of her death, anything that she possesses of her estate will be divided equally between David and Tim. And you would agree that that any that in her estate at the time that she died, she owned the Brace Heather house and the Huffsmith house. Is that correct? Yes. So you would agree that under Betty's will, the only two people who will have an interest or who have an interest in any of her stuff, including those two properties, is David and Tim. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. But it's your testimony that that you um, you need to sell the Brace Heather house um now which david was living in um strike that why is it again that you need to sell the brace heather property now because one it's the quickest way to get funds for the estate which was very necessary to continue supporting david and tim i could not get david's um fidelity money because he wouldn't talk to them, he wouldn't talk to me, and I didn't get the POA from Melanie. So therefore, he had no money of his own. And the only money I had for him was resting in that house to be sold. And three, I needed to um, pay uh, debts off. And so really, that, that, was the, that was the most easily liquidated asset available. And before Betty died, she verbally, because she, she lived with me her last three months of life, uh, she told me very specifically to sell Brace Heather quickly and not to let the sons live there and especially not together. So I have done that or I've attempted to do that. Uh, Your Honor, I think I jumped the gun here. I, at this time, I'd like to admit the will in, into evidence as Exhibit A. Objection. There being no objections, A is admitted. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. Um, I guess I just hit pause. Okay. So you're understand, you agree with me that under the will, all of Betty's property is to go to David and to Tim. Is that correct? Yes. That's and that would include, opinion. and that, that would include the Brace Heather property and the Dobbin Hudson property, which you live at currently. Yes. 
that is my understanding of the will. However, that is not what she verbally told me, which I guess doesn't matter now. She wanted it to be split among the six, actually. I'm going to have checked it. Give me a um, okay. Who is living at the Brace Heather property now? My father is staying there. He is not living there. He just moved in recently to get the house cleaned up, and he doesn't have enough funding to stay at a hotel or get a lease somewhere. So I told him he has X amount of time um, to stay there and get it ready to be sold, and then that's it. Okay, so he's living there, yes? Yes, but he is not. I mean, yes, he's living there right now, but I want it to be very clear that he is not to be staying there for anything other than getting it sold, ready to be and, sold. And who, excuse me, I'm sorry. Who is your father? Paul Timothy Patton. Okay. When did Tim move into the house? Uh, I have to look. Maybe a couple weeks ago. Do you need me to see that right now? Well, let me ask you this. I told you that he's been living there since November 10th when uh, David was removed from the property. Would that sound correct to you? No, ma'am. He wasn't okay, living so there yet. Do you think it was before Thanksgiving that, that Tim moved in the house? It was before Thanksgiving, but it was not November 10th because um, there was about it, it, there was about a week and a half-ish uh, where no one was living there at all. And I was just going back. Um, to check on the house. Okay, and um, who's paying the utilities at the Braze Heather property currently? Currently, well, the next payment will be uh, done by Tim, Paul Timothy Patton. Uh, okay. Melanie was paying it, and she's done now because she paid up through the portion that David was living there. So the next portion, Tim will take over. But and again, is Tim, is Tim paying rent to the estate to live there? No. No. Okay. Was David paying rent to the estate to live there? No. So would you agree that you um, sent a notice to vacate to David in order to allow Tim, your father, to move into that property? No. It okay, was never so why did you send the notice to vacate to David? Because he refused to leave and he refused multiple times. And I could not get the house ready to be sold with him living there. As per the documents and photos I'd like to send, because it's impossible the living condition he left it in. I couldn't do anything with him there. And my father living there was not even in the picture. I asked him for help. Again, if Melanie had helped me, I wouldn't have had to ask my, my dad. But she didn't, so I had to ask him. And he can't afford to live somewhere else right now. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I need to get that house sold. I needed help. Melanie refused to help me, even though I offered to pay her way and, and keep and, and accommodate her stay here. And so I had to ask my dad. When David was removed from the property, did you change the locks on that property? Yes. Yes. And but why I did you do that? No, why I, did you change the locks on the property? I changed the locks on the property because I um, did not want him to return to the property and stay there like a homeless person. But I changed the locks on Friday, which I on Monday, um, Monday the 6th, I believe it was, uh, was the date of the letter. And they had three day notice officially, but I actually gave them until Friday before I changed the locks. And so they had all week and sorry, what was the, what's the next question? Um, did David ever tell you um, that he was vacating the property? No, he, he didn't tell me anything at all. And whenever I asked him repeatedly, he told me he, well, he really just didn't say anything. He just kept sitting in his chair, staring at the TV. And same thing with his caregiver slash friend. They made no move whatsoever to pack or to get ready or anything. And it took me having to threaten him with the cops for him to do anything. And even then he would, he barely, he barely moved out of his chair. And I gave him, I gave them multiple, I gave them months of notice and then weeks and then days. And then I showed it up and they still wouldn't make a move to pack. So I gave them an eviction notice, which turned out to be for three or four days. And he got taken to the 
to jail because he had a warrant, which is not my fault. And his friend had the whole week to get David's stuff out of there and, and the truck, and he didn't. So I don't really know why the eviction is even a problem because they had all the opportunity that they needed to get whatever they need out of there. And also David told me um, that Sean had a brother who was going to house David. So I think I said too much. What's your question? Oh, that's, that's actually, um, so where do you believe, where do you understand that David's living now that he was kicked out of his house my by you in November? My understanding is that he's staying in a hotel, but prior to my no, eviction. Thank you. I think you answered my question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so just so I understand correct your testimony correctly. Well, strike that. Let me, let me ask this. How long had David been living in that house at the point in time that you kicked him out? since uh 2019 i think whenever he left melanie so approximately four years right that was his house that's how you understood that's the david's house okay so i understand tell me if i'm wrong that you kicked david out of his house which and and then moved your father in approximately a week after that is that right that is not i see how that's looks that way to you but that's not what happened i never planned on having my dad living there at the time that i kicked david out i did not kick him out for the only reason other than he would not leave voluntarily nor would he make any move to get ready to leave. and that was the only way i could get him out of there and that i didn't even mean to he had a warrant so i i mean i was told that he had a place to stay but yet he wouldn't move out his brother promised my dad and myself he has a place to go but then whenever he actually had to leave he's not there so i don't know why he's not there okay um have you contacted a realtor for the to put the brace on their property up for sale i'm doing it through open door okay so you started that process yes um what about the dobbin husband's property What's the Are question? you have you contacted a realtor? Have you gotten an appraisal done on that property? Have you done any taken any steps to selling that property? Um, yes and no. I have a realtor, but I've not um, taken steps to sell it yet, based on the fact that the commercial land around us is developing and the offers are going to get better if we wait a little longer. And in the meantime, you intend to occupy that that property as your primary residence. Is that correct? Yes. Would you agree with me that the estate would have money if you sold the Dobbin Husband's property? Um, yes. Okay. Similar to if you sold the Brace Heather property, the estate would have money, right? Yes. But there is a lease contract in place for the Dobbin, which makes it complicated. And I don't have money to afford a lawyer right now, which the whole reason, you know, like I don't have a lawyer and I couldn't pay them to make sure I got my checklist of things done and all that too, by the way. So I, I have very limited funding right now and the Dobbin property has a lot of repairs that are needed before I can even sell it because um, it's 25 years old. So um, it's not as quick and easy as you might think. Grace Heather is much easier. So are you, you're basing that, your opinion of whether that the Braze Heather property is easier to sell based on your just objective understanding of the condition of both of these properties. Is that right? That and the fact that um, I have, I mean, yes. You, you have not contacted, you, as the executor, you have not reached out to a realtor to say, I have got two properties in this estate. I'd like to see the viability of selling one or both of them. Do I do right? have a realtor. No, I do have a realtor. And she has not gone to look at Brace Heather yet, but she definitely can if that's if that's what I'm being ordered to do. Um, but she, I mean. Has she looked at the Dobbin Husband property with the idea of seeing how marketable it could be, how much you would obtain in a sale or making any efforts toward put, to listing that property? Yes. But yes, I can't she has. On, yes, but I cannot comment at this time on her opinion. 
So where is it that you are getting your opinion? What are you basing your opinion that that property uh, is in a commercial development and there, that would be better suited by waiting to sell it? What, what, is, what forms the basis for that opinion? Financial advisors, which include my husband. He is one. And he has a financial advisor and he has a financial advisor. So I'm going off of three people right now, as well as uh, an investment, uh, I'm sorry, an investor in our area um, um, who is very interested in not just our section here, but uh, surrounding areas. And your husband lives at that property with you, correct? Yes. Does your husband operate that dog breeding business with you? Yes. Is he an owner in that business? He is a he's a president, but he's not an owner. He's a president. Okay. So would you agree with me that if that property was sold, uh, that your business would have to find another place to operate, right? Yes. So it's it's directly beneficial to you and to your husband and to your business to be able to stay at that property, right? Yes. But no. You would agree with me that if that property was sold, you would have to find another place to live. Is that correct? I would agree with you, yes. But that would also mean that the beneficiaries would have more funding and therefore I could pay off my estate responsibilities and be done with all of this. So frankly, um, I don't really care if we have to leave. I just want it to be settled properly. Okay. Um, and you would agree that the Brace Heather property also needs repairs. Is that correct? Um, it does not need repairs in order to be sold. That's only like a nice thing. Like if I want to sell it for more money, which I would, but I don't have the money to put into repairs. The Dobbin property, I don't think I can sell it very well without repairing it some heat things like the water irrigation system, for instance. Okay, but I believe you testified earlier that the reason why you needed David out of the house is because you needed to get to the house to clean it up so that you could sell it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's so right. now you're testifying that the house is good as, as it is right now. No, it could be no, sold, yeah? I don't understand. I'm sorry to be rude. I'm talking about cleaning it up from mess and filth and trash and stuff. Okay, the, the house is perfectly um, functioning. The repairs are not necessary to get it sold. It can be sold the way it is. Uh, or repairs or renovations, either or, or both. It's not necessary to get it sold. But it is necessary to get the house cleaned so there's not rats and mold and filth and stuff everywhere. You know what I mean? Could you not have taken care of the filth and the rats and, and every, you know, just the general mold while David was living there? Um, David does not like having people around. I felt like he was uncomfortable with me there doing that kind of stuff, but maybe I'm wrong. Did David ever tell you that? Um, yes. Not about me specifically, but he would tell me about his severe anxiety issues. And um, I mean, I went over there many times, but he, I, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Okay. Um, who, as you understand it, are the two beneficiaries of Betty's estate? David and Tim. David and Tim. Okay. And as executor, what is your responsibility to David and Tim? To make sure that they have the money saved up for them and to make sure that they are um, not under a bridge. And um, that's it. And by the way, um, Tim also uh, is a resident here at the Dobbin property. And um, David was offered residency here and refused. But you also agree that if you sold the Dobbin house this property and the Brace Heather property date, the estate would have money, right? Yes. And if the estate had money, that would go 50% to David and 50% to Tim, right? Yes. So as you stand here today, as the, as the executor of the estate, why not sell both the properties? I'm working on it. Yeah. But you've actually made no steps to sell the job and husband's property at all. I've talked, like I said, I've talked to the realtor. We've talked to investors. And we have been told by the financial advisors and the investors that it's better to wait a little longer for the developing area around us to be completed. 
that our value of the property can be much higher and therefore have much more to give to the beneficiaries and to pay off the debts. That's what I've been advised. By who? By the financial advisors and by the investors and the person too. Okay, can you tell me the name of the financial advisors and the investors that you have spoken to? Jim Lyon is the financial advisor. My husband, Matt Cotis. Um, um, Rocky Del Papa is the is an investor. Um, and there was one more. Leslie Sullivan is the real estate agent. Okay. So if I talked to Jim and Leslie, they would they would tell me uh, they would uh, tell me everything that you're telling me right now. That you talked to them about selling the property and they advise you to not sell it. Yes, but I'm not sure that they would that Jim would remember me specifically because uh, it's been uh, a long time since, or maybe a few months since we talked to him initially, and my husband talked to him, not me. So I don't know if if you asked him my name, he would remember. So it was actually your husband, Matt Cotis, who spoke to Jim. Is that right? Yes, because they speak the same financial language. Okay. Uh, what does your husband do? What? What does your husband do for work? He's a business consultant, financial advisor, and accountant. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, does the estate have any ownership in any other businesses besides the dog business? He did have, um, well, he started the... Um, the Fieldings uh, restaurant. So if you've been there in the Woodlands, you can look it up, fieldings.com. Um, he was a co-founder and he built um, three of those and also Peli Peli in the Woodlands. He was um, a, a founder of that, um, but he's no longer involved in those ventures. I'm sorry, I was referring to the estate. Does the estate have any, any ownership in any businesses? Betty had a... Um, Betty had an agreement, a verbal agreement with us, and we never got the paperwork finished. Uh, she was to be a partial owner in the dog business, um, but um, we did not push paperwork in her face when uh, when we had the opportunity to, because she was she was sick with a broken neck, and I wanted to. I did not care to do any of that stuff at that time. Uh, what about an, an um, entity called Patent Perfect? Yes, I. Um, I have that, but we haven't done anything with it. Did Betty own anything in that entity? Um, I think so. Okay. What about Dinky Dinker? No. You don't. You don't know Dinky Dinker? It sounds familiar, but maybe it's something off of Netflix. <laughs> no, it's not anything to my knowledge. Yeah. So, uh, um, and what's your plan with the Dobbin Hudson property? Are you intending to sell it anytime soon? I think I already mentioned I want to sell it at the best time it is to sell. And right now, with inflation and real estate, um, there is a good time and there is a bad time. And right now is not the right time. But I had proper funding for one thing I could do what I needed to to get it repaired and get it sold but I don't want to do that until it's the right time to sell and I haven't gotten an offer that I've been advised to take and there but I have HOA meetings um, that they they're specifically talking about um, widening the road adding a school doing things that would very much um, accentuate the or increase the value so I have, I can show you an article that literally says what I'm, I'm saying. It, the property value is rising as we speak because of the developing area around us. So you have no plan to sell it as of right now? That's not true. I do. I'm not yeah. going to sell it tomorrow. And I'm not going to sell it to open door. But I have my eyes open for the right offer. And I'm and I'm making sure that I make the sale at the right time per my advisors. So I absolutely have a plan to sell it. And I've 
I told the rest of the beneficiaries as well that they would have they 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 have a place to stay if they need it. I offered Dave and Tim to live here. Tim did, but um, David declined, like I said. So in the meantime, while I'm not selling it, I'm trying to use it for the purpose that Betty wanted, which was family, and they have declined. Tim did not decline. He he stayed here, but um, the rest of them declined. But in the meantime, until that property sale, you intend to live there as your primary residence until the point it is sold, right? Yes. And you intend to operate your business out of that property, right? Yes. How much money are you paying towards the mortgage every month? $8,000. $8,000. And it's your position that you are paying that personally directly to the mortgage company? Correct. Um, and you're paying the taxes on that property? Yes. Okay. Have you paid any creditors of Betty's estate? Um, not very much because I can't afford to because of all of what we talked about. Which creditors have you paid? I've paid um, a portion of it to um, my husband. I paid a portion to it uh, to the Bulldogs business because they were owed money. Um, and I, which is not Matt, it's his his family um and i uh paid something else off state farm um funds have been very limited i i could really not do very much i mean it was it was it's enough to pay the mortgage and to support david and tim so the funds that you did have available to you, and tell me if I'm wrong, you paid to your husband, right? Not not all that he's owed, but I paid but you, a little bit. And okay. I don't know what the number is right now. I can give you all the records, but I, I had a very limited amount of funds. So I gave a little bit to him, a little bit to the Bulldogs business, a little bit to the insurance and the mortgage things that, and the utilities, of course, but that's not really a debtor. But yeah, I, I made sure everything was kept up and running in the meantime. And I gave what I could to the people that had um, been owed the most, but that it, there was hardly a drop in the bucket. So you, you paid the mortgage for the Huffman's hus property where you live, right? You paid the utilities for the Huffman's property where you live, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you were not paying the utilities on the Brace Heather property where David was living, right? I was, I was until the time that I could no longer afford to do so because I had $5 left in my bank account, sorry, 19. And, um, I told Melanie that I could not keep paying for it. And so she took over. Okay. And is that why you never had the AC repaired in the property? I did not know that the AC was out. Nobody told me until um, I went there and I saw, uh, um, well, okay, sorry. David and his friend did not tell me about the AC. It was a word of mouth from someone, from someone, from someone, from someone. And so I had no idea. And apparently by that time, by the time I was told by whoever, um, it had been out for months. I didn't know. And I would have done something about it at the time it had happened because I had the money, but no one told me. Are you aware that the estate code has an order listed of what you are allowed to pay as the executor? Oh, say that again. A what? Are you aware that the Texas Estates Code has a defined list or order of the claims that you are allowed or what you are allowed to pay out of the state money? I'm aware that it exists. I don't know what it says. Okay. Are you aware that David and Tim cannot live together? Yes. Based on prior things? Yes, you are aware of that. Okay. That was Betty's specific instruction, which is something that I'd, I'd definitely been trying to follow. Okay, so your solution to that was to remove David from the house and allow David to, or allow Tim to move in, right? Right, but again, that's only temporary. And before any of this, David had an offer to live at the Dobbin residence and in in his own uh, detached garage also has a kitchen, or, I'm sorry, um, like it has like three rooms in it. It's, in a, it's a studio apartment. We offered him to live there and he would be separate from where Tim was staying. So I just want to point that out. That was offered to him free of charge. He declined. It's still open, but he's 
decline. I, I'm trying to do my very best to be a good executor and family member. I hope you can see that, but that's not why you're here. What's the next question? Did you notify the mortgage on the Dobbin Hudson's property that Betty is deceased? Um, I did, yes. Do you think you were acting as a good family member and a good fiduciary to David by having him forcibly removed from the property and allowing your father to move into there? I did that because he would not comply with my previous requests. So I get why you think I was being a bad family member by doing that, but that's the only way he got out of his chair and that's the only way to get his stuff out of there. And again, it would not have actually happened. He would not have gone to jail if he didn't have a warrant. And so, again, I was told he had a place to go to, his friend's brother's house. That was their agreement. He told him, David said, um, I'm getting the, the names mixed up. Blake is the person who has the house for David. Blake told my father, who told me, that it would be ready to live in two weeks. And yet David would not leave when he could have, and he did not make any moves to pack. So I thought in my head, he has a place to go. He's just not going anywhere. And I had to threaten him before he did anything. And then I had to evict him because he still wouldn't do anything. <clears throat> but as you said here today, you never evicted David from that house. Isn't that right? But what? You have never filed for a forcible detainer action in the JP court to have him evicted from that house. Is that correct? I've never done that. No, he just has the notice. Okay. And are you aware that David obtained a writ of reentry from the Justice of the Peace Court as de declaring that your lockout of him from that property was unlawful? I'm aware that it exists. How are you aware that it exists? Because I got it in the mail. You got it in the mail. Did you get red tags on your on your gate to your property from the Montgomery County Sheriff when they were trying to serve you with notice of that writ? I've got one one tag. Did you call the sergeant and ask him what he was trying to serve you with? No, I spoke to them about another matter. I did not call the sergeant personally. I called the Montgomery Sheriff's Office and um, I dealt with my issue and they did not mention anything to me about that. That was actually, I called them prior to getting that in the mail, uh, wherever it is. It came in the mail later to me than when I called them. So when I called them, they should have said something to me but, about the issue you're saying, but they didn't. So. Uh, I don't know. What to say so you've that. seen the writ of reentry that the Justice of the Peace Court granted in David's favor. Have you have actually now. seen I have it. Now. I have now. Yes, it's a letter that I just recently opened. Okay, and and that says that you are commanded to give David possession of that property. Does it not? I would have to read it again before I agree. Yeah. But you would agree with me if it said that you would be commanded to give him possession of that property. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, but I also have already told him he can come in any time to get his stuff. I have that in writing. I've already told, not him, sorry, to Melanie. I've, I offered, I said he can come whenever me or Tim are there to let him in, get his stuff. And she told me he can't do it all week and to get back later. So uh, that's where we are. He doesn't have his stuff because he doesn't come get his stuff. He doesn't get his stuff because you locked him out of the house. Is that not correct? <laughs> it is. I have full access to it. And I told him, when can you come over? Let me know. And, she, and and Melanie said he can't come this week. So I said, okay, let me know when he can come. And we'll make sure he gets his stuff. There is complete, complete openness. He just can't live there. And if you would see my documents, which I will give you, I don't trust him to have keys to that house because he will just live there. And I can't, and again, Tim is not living there long. I want him out in like a week and a half. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not kidding with you. These, but these, you these, agreed with me. I'm sorry. Right? You agreed with me previously that under Betty's will, Tim and David owned one half of everything that Betty owned when she died. Is that correct? Um, yes. That does not mean okay. that they can live there if I can't sell the house with them living in there. Which was but that would mean that David effectively owned one half of the Braze Heather property, right? I think so, but this is why I want a lawyer. 
because now you're asking me questions and I feel like you're cornering me and I don't, I don't even have the document in front of me anymore. So I don't feel comfortable with these questions and I don't feel comfortable without a lawyer. Um, Your Honor, I think at this time I don't have any further questions for Ms. Uh, Patton and um, truthfully, Your Honor, I'm not intending for this hearing to go so long and I have to make arrangements for my husband to pick up my daughter from uh, daycare. If there's any way I could have like a five minute break to call I think our, our court reporter would probably appreciate that too. I don't think anyone expected it to take this long. Um, so we're going to take a, a five minute recess. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so if we are all still here and about jackie are you still there oh yes ma'am jackie are you okay to keep going i know we didn't give you notice we were going to be doing this yes, uh, you're okay yes okay thank you so much uh-huh okay uh miss bryant had you passed um, your honor the I think it is, excuse me i'm sorry had you passed the witness yes ma'am yes okay. your honor so miss Patton. The way that this uh, kind of would normally work or uh, yeah, normally work is if you had a lawyer, then at this time, the lawyer would be able to cross examine you and just like you did with mistake, right? Where y'all both took turns. So in situations like you're in right now where there is no lawyer, we call it the witness can testify in the narrative, which basically means you can just tell me what it is you need to tell me and you've been trying to tell me some stuff and so here's your first opportunity to do it i would just ask if miss bryant makes an objection if she says i object just stop talking let her make her objection let me rule on it then we'll get back to your testimony okay so i'm assuming you'd like to to, to testify now thank you okay go ahead okay um A lot of what Melanie said when she uh, was uh, speaking earlier um, was incorrect or false. And I, I have been, me and my husband have been doing nothing but trying to keep this family afloat. And the fact that Fidelity would not give Betty um, her, her, her regular distributions um, or the actual money she was had, she had liquidated. She needed that money in order to fund the people in the family, she was supporting almost everybody. Um, and she needed the money for, um, for other things. Right. And so she couldn't get any of that. And so me and my husband, we're both entrepreneurs. Uh, we operate our own businesses. Um, so it's hard financially on us a lot of the time. And we took that responsibility on, I took her in. Um, she lived with me here at the Dobbin property, which she invested in because the stock market was going down, fidelity was being difficult. She invested it in, in the real estate, and she wanted to have it. A bit. Sorry, I'm sorry. Was that? I, I'm just gonna. Yeah, you're. I'm gonna object to the extent she's testifying about things that occurred prior to the decedent passing away. Um, that's overruled. Go ahead. So she had this intention with this property to be for family and to make sure that all of her family members were properly supported. When she could no longer financially cover these things and these people we did and we covered her we took her in we take we took care of her while she was she had a broken neck um i i did everything i possibly could you can look at the police webcams the night that she passed away um i we did everything and from that time on i've gotten nothing but strife from melanie and i asked her immediately not to have lawyers because i couldn't afford any and she did she bucked up, she bucked up with lawyers and at the same time told me she couldn't help pay for David. And then she, like I said, she declined to come actually help me to get the process moving along. She knew from the very beginning that I couldn't get David his money um, because he would not cooperate and I did not have a POA for him. When I, I could not get the POA from Melanie for whatever reason she said. And so my hands were completely tied uh, from helping David. I could not get him any funds released and I couldn't get him out of the house. I couldn't get the house sold because of the condition that it's in. 
and I offered him stay here at the Dobbin house. I offered him, we, my husband too, offered him everything he could want. He had privacy, land, everything you would want, but he declined. And so now he's off on his own path and I feel like I'm being a really bad family member, but I'm trying very hard to follow her wishes now. And that has come in the form of tough love because David has been completely uncooperative to actually helping this cause. Not only that, but because the will was not ever uh, re redone um, because Betty did not list some specific things in the will that she verbally told me she wished she had. But at that time, I couldn't get her to sign documents. I didn't want to push them on in her face, right? And I couldn't I couldn't do that part of it because I was trying to take care of her and she ended up passing away way earlier than I think she should have. And so here we are in this mess. And I am the only person in the family that she trusted to be her executor. My dad and his brother, David, are not capable, as Melanie has also said in writing to me, Everybody in the family agrees. They agree. They don't want to do it. They can't do the job. I am the only person who can. And I very much request that you don't remove this from me because Melanie has been in Georgia my whole life. She's never said anything to me that she's concerned about. If she's actually concerned about something, she doesn't talk to me about it. She goes behind my back. She tries to take over. And if she's jealous, she's jealous. But I have done everything I could. And now my credit is completely wasted. So with my husband's, we have no money. I literally have $5 or something in my bank account right now because I can't, I can't get estate funds released other than the house being sold. Yes, that includes Dobbin, but I, I can't sell it right now. But I have planned to unless David and Tim want to move here. Uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, David, because Tim is going to be here again. Uh, he's only at the Brace Heather residence right now to help clean it up, like I said. Um, but um, I just I, I just request that you that you see my side for what it is because I think that Melanie is acting very unfairly and she doesn't know what she's talking about. And I've given her every opportunity to know. I have video chats. I offered her to come down. I flew down her sons, my cousins, Josh and Nick. I flew them down, um, had them out for a whole weekend, have answered whatever questions they recorded my conversation with them they told me they were recording it so they would give it to Melanie but apparently she never listened to it so I've done everything I possibly can to get Melanie on board I've asked her for her help before I asked her for her help she was demanding that she help me and at that time it was the wrong time and now she won't help me uh, so um, I'm in a spot I don't have enough funding even for a lawyer and um, Melanie has spent all of her money on lawyers which i think was unnecessary and i know i'm actually in your honor there's there's no there's no evidence in here about who's paying our fees or how those are being arranged I don't think so um my and if i'm allowed to call a witness um i can have you speak with my husband but he's not necessary to speak with you i mean i i've given you the information that i think i have but i'm Oh, I know. So you can't call witnesses just yet because we're still in Miss Bryant's case in chief. Uh, but you'll have an opportunity to do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, and I've I've made sure that um, Melanie's money, like I've tried to find that First Street financial account, but they don't have anything for anyone under Patton, Betty, Boyd. There, there's nothing there, and so. I'm not sure if that lawyer made a mistake, the lawyer that drew up the will, um, but I, I can't find anything with that account. And everything that did exist would was already spent on David, um, so I because he has a lot of health things. So uh, I don't really know what she wants me to do about her money because I she's not in uh, she's not a beneficiary of Fidelity. So I will try to get her whatever money I can from. Um, you know, house proceeds if there's something left, but I can't follow the will in regards to her uh, beneficiary. Okay, is that it? Um, I think so. I just. Um, okay. Yeah, I think so. Ms. Bryant, do you have any uh, redirect? Ms. Patton, is it your testimony that you don't have enough uh, money in the estate to pay for an attorney to represent you as the executor of the estate? That's correct. 
also your testimony that you have enough money to pay to fly Melanie and Josh and all these other people down here? I did. That was in the summer. I don't have any more now. And is that because you paid that money to your husband and to other and to your dog breeding business and and to support the Robin Hudson's property? My dog breeding business is a, does not have any income right now. I have had to take on debt in order to make these house payments and to continue supporting my family. We are in debt. That's all there is to it. I've not I've not paid off any creditors completely. My husband has gotten a smidgen, and that was only to cover his own family because he has kids. So I, we don't have anything. I did not pay him off and, and now I'm benefiting from that. Like we have nothing and we have no credit either because we took on credit card debt to do things too. Like it's been a lot. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not being what Melanie has made me out to be. We are trying our hardest. Are you aware that um, Betty named a successor executor in her will? Am I aware that Betty did name two? Named another executor in her will in the event that you could not serve as the executor. Josh Patton, who has to be either a Texas resident or have a res uh, have a representative in Texas. And I've been in communication with Josh, but he's been unresponsive. Okay, but you would agree that there is that Betty did name a successor executor in her will, right? He did name him, but he would not be able to do his job without a Texas representative. Okay. Was there another executor named in the event that Josh could not serve? Uh, Nicholas, same point. They both live in different states. They're not in Texas. Okay. Um, and do you, do you agree that David lived with Betty in her house for three to four years prior to Betty dying? Is that right? Yes. Okay. And in that time, you did not live there at the house with Betty, right? That's correct. And Betty lived with you for approximately, what, six weeks after she fell and broke her neck and before she passed away? Is that right? Um, I think it was a little bit more than six weeks. Okay, yeah. but it was, it, it was a couple months, right? I mean, it wasn't a year. It was, it was a couple months, That's right? Correct. Yes. And before that, she was living with David with her son at the Braves Heather house, and presumably David was taking care of her. Is that right? That is incorrect. David was not taking care of her at all. It was horrible. Okay, but she lived there with him. Yes. Willingly, yeah? Yes. Okay. Tim also lived there for that for a period of that time. Okay. Um and Melanie is not asking to be made the executor of, of Betty's estate. You understand that, right? I have that in writing that she that she was attempting to remove me and that she could do it herself. So if she's not trying anymore, she was. Okay. I don't think you answered my question. Let me ask it a different way. Yes. Do you believe that Melanie Patton is asking to be made the executor, to be named the executor of Betty's estate? Um, not necessarily. I'm not sure. I don't know what her motive is, but I think there is a motive of something in there because she's trying very hard to get me removed and I'm the only one actually doing something or trying to, and she's getting in my way. Do you feel overwhelmed by your duties as the executor to Betty's estate? I own, yes, because of the difficulties that Melanie and David have put me through. That's the only reason why I feel overwhelmed. Otherwise it'd be quite simple. Okay. Have you allowed your husband to, to handle estate affairs on your behalf? Yes, as necessary. Yeah. But what affairs are you talking about? Because that's very open. Has your husband handled business for you and your capacity as the independent executor of Betty's estate? Does talking to David or talking to Melanie, is that included in that? My question is simply, has Matt handled anything for you that you would have handled yourself as the independent executor of Betty's estate? Um, yes, if we're talking about conversations with people, because that's what I'm talking about, is he's had conversations that I've asked him to have with David or with Melanie or with me, and only because Melanie wouldn't talk to me or because David wouldn't talk to me. I'm only doing it as necessary. 
whose decision was it to pay back Matt some of the money that he um, supposedly is owed by the estate? It was my decision. And I only did that because we had no money in our bank account. And I only did that as little as I possibly could because I'm trying to support everybody. So I, I know what you're saying, but I am not siphoning off money for my husband. He put in over half a million dollars into the patent estate. And there's nothing in there for, for him to be paid back. So I want you to know that he is their biggest creditor. Okay. And he probably won't have to wait a long time for any of that. I don't know. Has he so, submitted a claim to you for the amount that he supposedly is owed by the estate? What do you mean submitted a claim? Has he submitted a claim to you as a creditor of the estate? Has I mean, yes, we talk about it. Is there? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So he he's verbally yes your, your testimony that he's verbally told you that he is he is paid five thousand five hundred thousand dollars yes to the estate. unfortunately i'm going to have another court something here because he's going to have to be represented like yeah like i want to avoid all of this this is why this, this is why the dobbin property being of high value and increasing in value is important because if i sell it right now i'm going to be out millions of dollars when i could wait pay off the other stuff, get the other things sold and have way more in my property value and Betty's property value to actually pay off everybody and give the beneficiaries what they're supposed to. And like I, I told you before, I was going to give all of the beneficiaries a portion of that because that's what she verbally told me before she died. Not just David and Tim, but I know what I have to do for the will. So whatever. Who are the beneficiaries of Betty's estate? David and Tim. Are you a beneficiary of uh, Betty's estate? Not in the will. She no. verbally told me she wanted to include the Dobbin house proceeds for all of the six beneficiaries like she did with Fidelity, but that's not in the will. So when you represented to the court at the beginning of this hearing that you were a beneficiary of Betty's estate, that was not correct, was it? No, but I thought that included Fidelity. My apologies. Yeah. Is that separate from when you say you're not including the beneficiaries under Fidelity? Because that's all that I was talking about. That's all that I have beneficiary claim to. Okay, so my understanding of your testimony is that the only money connected to Betty that you were to receive was from a Fidelity account that passed outside of her will, right? Yes. Um, okay. And you understand that that fidelity account is not a part of Betty's estate. I did not understand that. Okay. Um, and then I, I am a creditor as well, not just the beneficiary. Um, and my husband and I are, are married. We've, we have, we share bank accounts. We've been common law married now for over nine years. I have a wedding ring. Um, so if that's called into question, that's legitimate. So, But as we sit here today, you have no documentation from your husband that no, supports do. any type of claim that he I may do. or may not have I do. the estate. I do. But if you want him to get into detail, he will be charging a lot of money for doing so because it's going to be a lot of his time because it's going to take a long time to reconcile all of this stuff. I do have documentation. I have loads of it. But actually getting it and summarizing it and presenting it to you is going to take time. And his time is very valuable. And so he's going to bill you for it. So I really don't want to do that. I'd really just like my family to stop lowering up and just cooperate. You understand that you are to receive no money from the sale of the Dobbin Huffman's property or the Brace Heather property. Is that, you understand that, yeah? I do understand that. We have also put in money into the equity of the house, but I understand that legally it's going to David and Tim, of course. Your Honor, at this time, I don't think I have any further questions for Ms. Patton. Ms. Patton, there's one thing that I don't, I don't quite understand. So, and I think some of this is a little, uh, maybe lawyer, lawyer-ish stuff. But when Ms. Bryant refers to a claim, 
Um, typically, that means that there has been a, a document that's been presented to you um, that details specifically the amount owed. Um, so tell me what your husband has given to you for this okay. half million dollar claim. He has and, not presented a summarized document to me. But okay. We have all of the bank statement records. We have all of the information as to what what he put into it. He can he can develop that, but it's going to take some time because it got really complicated because we were mixing Betty's expense with our expense with business expense with Tim and David and all of it. Just I mean okay. money. You know what I mean. So we have everything we need to give you. But it's going to it's going to cost the patent estate money to do so. But so he has not given me an official document that's summarized yet, and he's been waiting to do that because we don't want to say the patent owes you more money now. You know what I mean? Okay, um, I can't. understand. Okay, did you have any more testimony you wanted to give me on on the situation? Not not just the claim thing, but all of it. Um. I'm not sure. Will we be doing another court case, a uh, court date? Um, there is not another court date scheduled right now. I that much I know. And we, how do I know? I haven't submitted those pictures to you yet because I'm having some trouble with the drive. Um, so once I do submit that to you, how do we talk about that? You you have to submit them during this hearing. Okay. Um. How much time can you give me? Um, well, I, it, it's not something I'm going to stop the hearing for. I mean, technically, I was I was giving you an exception to the rules because yes. exhibits were already supposed to be given to the court. Like, I think, I don't know, is it three days in advance of the hearing? I don't know. It's not unusual for me to, to just work with people and not make them do that, but I'm not going to stop yes. a hearing indefinitely so you guys can search around and do a whole bunch of you know fidgeting right. on different phones or computers or wherever you think these pictures are um so right now do you have any more testimony that you can give me? um i guess i just like to summarize saying um so the will names josh and nick as successors if I am removed or whatever, but they can't do it here because they're not Texas residents and they don't have representatives here. So if, if but if they're going to come down here, then they're going to be dealing with all the same stuff. So um, I'm not sure why Melanie won't help me now, given that she finally got the POA. I'm not sure why she won't help me now, but, but this is, I just need, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm pleading with you is all. I don't have more to add to my testimony. You know, um, there's another just, thing, now that you mention it, that I, I haven't really followed very well on this. You keep talking about you needed a POA from, uh, what is his name? I'm not good with names. David. Uh, David Patton. You needed a POA from David. When you're saying you needed a POA from him, you needed... I don't understand. Are you saying you needed him to have someone else acting as his POA or he needed to give you his his power of attorney? I'm saying, able? yes, I'm saying that um, David refused to cooperate or even speak with me about getting his beneficiary money. Um, and I wouldn't I was not allowed to talk to Fidelity without him authorizing me. Or He's him talking having, about the the payable and death account from Fidelity. Yes, and also okay. from the life insurance company, which he was named the beneficiary of. Okay. So I could not do anything to help him get his money because he would not cooperate on the on the portions that they needed to speak to him or get authorization from him. I and see what you're saying. It makes sense now. Him. I totally get it. Okay. All right. Um, any more questions, Ms. Bryant, from this witness? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Patton, I'm, I'm thinking until you get to your, your part of things, you're okay? 
yes, I'm going to get these things uploaded to you if I could have like five or 10 minutes. Okay, keep, keep trying. We might have to take a break later for something. Um, Ms. Bryant, do you have any other witnesses? Um, Your Honor, I'll call Josh Patton just briefly. I have like three questions for him. Okay. Mr. Patton, if you're still with us, can you, uh, you are. Okay, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I swear. Okay, go ahead, counsel. Josh, um, are you aware that you are named as the successor executor in Betty Patton's will? Yes. Um, do you have a resident agent that you have um, appointed or designated in the event that you are selected as the executor? I have someone that if I'm selected that I would use, yes. And who is that? Uh, that would be Emily Taylor. Um, okay, Emily would be your lawyer, right? Yes. Who would be your resident agent? Um, it would be, it be your Lund. Sherry, Sherry Lund. Lund. Okay. And as far as you understand, is Ms. Lund on the on the hearing right now? Yes, I believe she's on. She was on earlier. Okay. That's all my questions, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Ms. Patton, do you have any questions for for Josh Patton? Um. Um. Yeah, I mean, do you want this job? Are you trying to, or do you want it? I'll do it. I just want this whole thing to go as smoothly and quickly but It's as not possible. going to go smoothly. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But I, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get this wrapped up as quickly and immediately as possible. If you're willing to do whatever it takes, then why aren't you cooperating with, with me? I haven't not cooperated. You haven't asked me of anything that I haven't done. You didn't respond to our last whole message about the next opportunities and the Dobbin property and everything that we were talking I about. I Objection, Your Honor, relevant. Okay, we can talk about this another okay. time. I don't have anything to say. Okay, anything further, Ms. Bryant, from this witness? No, Your, Your Honor. Honor. I apologize if you don't mind, and it's a little unorthodox. I just, if I could redirect Josh with three quick questions that I don't think you'll be surprised by. Okay, go ahead. Josh, um, you guys are asking a lot at 6.05 on the Friday for Christmas when this was not supposed to be even contested. And I know that's not your fault, but now you're kind of out there as the third lawyer. So I promise I'll be quick, Your Honor. If you must. Josh, are you qualified to serve as the executor of this estate? Do you have a felony in the state of Texas, in the United States? No. Uh, do you owe the estate any money? No. Um, and is it your understanding that you are not otherwise unsuitable to serve? Yes. That's all I can throw. Okay. Ms. Bryant, any more questions for Mr. Pat? No, Your Honor. Ms. Patton, any more questions for Mr. Pat? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Bryant, call your next. Your Honor, this time we rest. Okay, so Ms.